got a new package. Got some engine zinks. That looks like a Perkins blue. It is Perkins blue. This is the transmission oil and engine oil cooler. A brand new one. A, a brand new one. So in case you didn't hear, uh, we lost a bunch of engine parts in the shed fire last, uh, what was that, Halloween? And middle of November, we ordered the uh, Beta 43 and called them about a month and a half ago and they said, we have no idea when you're gonna get it. So it's supposed to be here in April. It's supposed to be here in April. And what is it? Middle of June now. So plan B. Put the Perkins back together. Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell the Marina Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayona 37 Ramble On for the past several years. I don't think there's a single part of this boat that we haven't repaired, replaced, or improved in some way. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. Here's our parts, and there's the zinc. All right, so the plan is uh, pull the old engine, and uh, we're gonna send it out and get it machined, new bearings, new, new cylinder sleeves, new fuel injectors. Um, talking to the guy this, this afternoon, uh, he said uh, that they'll send it out and they'll have those diesel injectors serviced. They work on Perkins diesels. Basically, take everything off that isn't a cylinder head or an engine block. So all the appurtenances, all the lifting brackets, all the water drain plugs, they'll do the freeze plugs and everything. I've got a freeze plug set and gasket sets and I will take it to them. They'll figure out whether they need to machine the journals and on the crankshafts and uh, rod journals and then uh, sleeve it, bore it. Put the piston rings in, short block it for me, put the cylinder head back on, probably do the valve uh, valve seats and everything as well in the uh, cylinder head. New springs, new keepers, all that stuff, so. We had everything hot tanked uh, right before the shed fire and the header tank, the heat exchanger, and this, uh, the old transmission cooler that is still bolted onto the engine right now. Uh, that those were sitting in the shed and they burned up in the shed but uh, one of the things I had on the header tank was this it's about six inch diameter aluminum plate with six holes drilled in it so I'm gonna have to manufacture one of those I'll fabricate one of those out of a it little melt? scrap of aluminum it didn't melt it was eroded from that uh, yeah. situation of right. running the coolant too hot yeah so if we get the Perkins rebuilt and installed uh, I'm going to be a lot more hesitant to yank it back out to put a new beta in. Stay tuned. <laughs> the adventure continues. <laughs> all right. One thing I remembered about getting this Perkins out was I got to take the transmission fluid out. We already drained all the oil and coolant and everything out of the Perkins block last year when we were uh, originally pulling this thing out of the boat or part of it. I'm going to try and siphon that tranny fluid out of there as much as I can and uh, start breaking bolts. I put some PV blaster on uh, the uh, shaft coupling this morning and I'm gonna try and crack some nuts and bolts and see if I can get that shaft coupling separated. A couple of wiring things to pull off, disconnect the uh, fuel return line, then I can undo the motor mount bolts and see if I can get that thing slid forward. I still gotta figure out the where I'm gonna hook up this uh, uh, chain hoist and then I also have to, I'm thinking with between the, probably the main halyard holding up the boom is the topping lift and then maybe the topping lift is a backup. Uh, supporting it somewhere mid boom because I want to lift from the middle of the boom and I don't want to do too much on that. I don't know. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but uh, I might have to get the gallows out of the way. 
we're going to get the boat swung around uh, in our marina. They're going to help us out with a couple of their work boats and shove us back in butt to that way, to the dock. And then we'll be able to use this thing as a little crane and hopefully with the main sheet tackle and we'll just ease it over maybe with a traveler or something. Got to get the fluid out of here uh, before I can start breaking the tranny and the engine apart. So I found this thing. This is what we use to pull the water out of the uh, engine block. So I'm going to try this. See if it works sucking out the uh, transmission fluid. It's kind of a big tube. It fits right down in the hole. There's the hole on the engine where the dipstick was. This is the dipstick. So it fits right down in there. So it goes pretty deep. I'm going to turn it around so the curve is against the outside wall of the transmission. I'll see what I get from there. And then... Uh, make a mess. <laughs> Our bilge pump hasn't ran in a while, so I think we're okay. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and turn those things off. Let's see what this does. There you go. You see that? I've never even seen the inside of a velvet drive except in a Looks like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy that got PDF'd back in the 80s. Actually, I don't think they had PDF back in the 80s. For this. I gotta break this thing in half. So this engine, the transmission, the bell housing there, that is on the back motor mounts and the whole rest of the engine is on the front motor mounts. So they have to come out in two pieces. And that's the conundrum I'm having right now is how to make this thing happen. Um, I'm going to break these bolts. I got some really bad rust right here where the uh, old heat exchanger rusted. rusted. It leaked and rusted out um, before we bought the boat. Is that your new pipe wrench? No. <laughs> Should I tell the story? There's a new pipe wrench. What did you, why, do you get, why did you get a new pipe wrench? Well. Do we need a pipe wrench? I'm going to be installing seacocks and through-hole fittings when we uh, haul the boat out. But all my pipe wrenches got shot in the shed. So I was driving home from work the other day, and I took my regular road, my little right turn off, and take the country roads back to our marina. And uh, right as I'm getting off of 160, I see a pipe wrench sitting right on the center line of the road right at the intersection. Of the so I, highway. Of the highway. And I was driving in socks, airing out my feet. And uh, <laughs> Jenny will appreciate that. So I put jammed on my boots again, and I hop out of my car just as another dude rolls up in a pickup. And he's like, as I run past him, he goes, you going for that pipe wrench? And I said, you bet your ass. And he's like, mm, and he kept on driving. So anyway, we found an almost brand new Husky pipe wrench. Um, it's got a little bit of road scar on it, but it's still good. So I'm happy about that. It's an 18 incher. That'll be great for putting in the through holes. Yeah, it's gonna, it's probably actually gonna shear off. Oh man. No, you know what? That's that. I think I'm going to cut these things off, rotate the shaft around, and then probably have to put a bar, some sort of a pry bar in between here and split these two couplings. Take off some stuff and try and lighten this engine up. So I'm going to take the header tank back off, take the oil cooler back off, disconnect the hoses. This thing's got to come off. Might as well just get stuff out of the way and get the uh, starter motor off this side. Pretty much everything that we had torn off the motor on Halloween. God, that stud's coming out. Dude, that's awesome. Oh, that's lucky. Ah, there we go. So I'm just pulling out the lag bolts for the motor mounts I can get to. But I got, um, I got a situation back under these rear motor mounts. Back in the back here, 
there's a real problem with the access to the motor mounts. Really hard to see, but this thing, there's no clearance to get that lag bolt out. At the actual motor mount, there's a lag bolt that goes down into it. So I gotta take this blue bracket off. There's a rear mount right here. I'm gonna have to take that thing off. It's just, I don't know how much this transmission weighs. I'm guessing 75 or 100 pounds, maybe not quite that much. Anyway, I just took the fuel filter off, the lift pump off, just trying to get things just to streamline the engine a little bit. I didn't want to take the rail off because there's so many little washers and stuff. I've got to strip the whole engine down anyway before I can send it out, but I'm just trying to skinny it up to get it out the companion way. So a couple of more bolts. I got to figure out how to split the transmission and the top and the bottom, it looks like, are studded. So you actually have to slide the the, in, the whole engine forward like six inches to get those studs to clear the transmission case while I support the transmission in place to move the engine forward. But I still haven't been able to get the pulley off and I'd like to get that off the snout just to, because the front clearance, I mean, that'll give me another inch and a half uh, getting it up and out of the companion way if I get this pulley off. I'm trying to support this thing because of the god-awful arrangement with the engine mounts. <laughs> it's a mess under there. So this is just a test run here, but I'm gonna support this with a two by four across this opening. So I had to take the bolts off here. And so these two go into the bell housing. This is loose now, uh, as is this side over here. Feels like actually there's a little bit more pressure on this side. I had to get this bracket made. It was uh, rusty, so I made a cardboard pattern, took it to a guy in Rio Vista. I cut it all out and he welded it together for me. So there's the motor mounts that are rubber bushings with isolation. And then there's the bracket that bolts it to the bell housing. So I'm just going to pop, pop these things off here, pop that one off there, and the transmission is supported. And then I can actually get to those bolts that are hidden underneath that hold the motor mount to the engine bed. You see the other bolt that I need to get out. So that's a, I need to get that lag bolt out. But I've also got this thing. So that thing bumps into the bell housing, so I got to do some jimmy jammy wangling or something to get this off. This is bolted to a metal plate that's lagged to the engine beds because the, the taper of the engine beds make it too short to get good lag bolts into. You can see part of that wood underneath there. That's where the uh, engine beds are scarfed into the hull and this is where it starts coming up and the bilge starts getting smaller. But yeah, I got all the, everything's loose now. I can actually physically, with a with a hoist and everything, I can slide the engine, take the pressure off of it and slide it forward cool. and support the transmission in place with this same rig that I had to do the, take the lag bolts out of the beds.